All right, Sony Xperia Z1 Compact. This is going to be an honest review, a fanboy free review of this brand new phone from Sony. My likes, my dislikes, and how this guy compares to some of the other top of the line Android phones, and the iPhone 5S on the market right now, so stay tuned. Jumping right in, this is the new successor to the Z1, I guess we'd call it, the miniature version, the compact version that Sony likes to call it. This is a 4.3 inch display and when you compare that to say a 5 inch display on the Nexus 5 you can see that it is actually quite a bit smaller. Um, you know you look at both of these phones in your hand and you can see that the Xperia Z1 Compact is quite substantially smaller um, in both width and height and obviously screen size uh, compared to some of these bigger Android phones like the Galaxy S4 or the Nexus 5. Um, just talk a little bit about what makes this phone so great according to Sony is they've taken all the, the great top of the line specs that the Z1 has and basically shrunken it down into a smaller form factor so you've got a 20 megapixel camera on the back uh, waterproofing around the outside of the phone a uh, 2.2 gigahertz quad-core processor um, you know and all the bells and whistles that go with your Z1 uh, but, you know, does it really uh, make that much of a difference? Is it really a great phone in a small package? And so, you know, we'll get into that here in a minute. When they first announced this phone, I was super excited to hear that it was going to come in a smaller package. I've really been a fan of smaller Android phones. Ever since Samsung um, kind of, you know, changed the market of Android with their Galaxy series and making phones that are too big for the human hand, um, you've seen this progressive smaller and smaller size of Android phones down the line, starting with uh, the Moto, uh, Motorola Moto X, the Moto G, um, this new Z1 Compact, the HTC One Mini, the Samsung Galaxy S3 Mini, Galaxy S4 Mini, and so Sony's sort of taken the lead here along with Motorola and, and putting premium specs inside of a smaller package, and I actually like that a lot. I like the form factor of this phone. I'm a fan of smaller Android phones, um, phones that you can reach, and of course Apple's been doing that forever uh, with their smaller screens and their iPhones. You know, they've kept the iPhone 5 and 5S at 4 inches, which in my opinion is still a little bit too small. Um, in fact, I even think 4.3, which is what this screen is, is actually a little bit too small as well. I'd prefer to have 4.7. I think 4.7 for me with maybe average size hands is probably the, the sweet spot for Android phones in terms of screen size. Um, again, we'll bring the Nexus 5 in. This is this 5 inch screen is just too big for me. As much as I really like this phone, I think it's still a little bit too big. It, the thinness makes up for it. You know, the fact that it's lightweight makes up for it, but it's still too hard to reach every Everything on this screen. So getting, getting, again, getting back into the screen size on the Sony Xperia Z1 Compact. Great. I like the fact that it's shrunken down. I like the fact that it's smaller. I like the fact that Sony has taken all these great features as of excuse me, features of their high-end smartphones and putting it into a smaller form factor. I think they've missed the mark here just a teensy, teensy little bit. Uh, things feel cramped, things feel small, things feel sort of congested and claustrophobic. Android's meant to be viewed on a bigger screen uh, than 4.3 inches. They've also decided to manufacture this phone in a whole host of colors, which is pretty cool too. Um, you know, we've seen Apple do this with the Apple iPhone 5C. We've got, you know, pink and yellow and white and black. I don't really I don't know. I'm not really a huge fan of these colors. I mean, I like the black, the white, and the green, but there's not a lot of variety, but hey, you know, for each their own. Um, so getting more into the design of this phone, it is, again, it is waterproof. It's sealed. They've got flaps on all these little covers so you can, you know, put your SIM card and your charger and press down and it's got a rubber seal around it. It is waterproof. Um, it does have a glass back. It does have a glass front, obviously. Um, there is some sort of plastic film or sheet that's on this. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm going to try and just focus on this real quick and see if you can see that. Um, you may not be able to, but there's a tiny, tiny piece of plastic or some kind of screen protector on this phone. Um, and what it does is it actually tends to be a fingerprint magnet and almost takes away from the clarity of the screen in my opinion. Um, the viewing angles on this device are way better than the original Z1. I mean that's probably what I was so excited about was the fact that you can actually turn the screen and still see the the, the LCD. I mean the, the viewing angles on the Xperia Z were so bad that um, it made me want to get rid of the phone from day one. They were just awful. The screen on the Z1 was terrible. Um, but the fact that it ha by, I think both front and back have this coating on it, what it does is it ends tends to like get scratched up super super easily and it's a huge fingerprint magnet. So you can see I've 
had this phone only for maybe a week or so, and it's got scratches in the back already, and the finger, your fingerprints just cover the whole thing, um, and that's kind of annoying. When you compare that to, again, we'll just use the Nexus 5, um, much, much, much more clean, doesn't really absorb fingerprints like, like it does on the Xperia Z1 Compact. As build quality goes, the phone feels solid. Um, I like the metal trim around the edges. I like the fact that it's kind of square. I like the power button in the middle. It's different. Uh, we do have... Uh, also an, a camera button on here which is nice um it's got a good weight to it i like the build factor i like i don't know sony just does a good job with i think their aesthetic on their phones i'm, I'm a fan of how it's built and how it feels um as far as durability goes i haven't looked at the drop test to see if this glass is shatter proof or shatter prone or how how it fares in terms of when you drop your phone um i don't like to use cases on my devices i i think it ruins how the phones look and so i'm a fan of the device i think i think it fits well in your pocket it's thin enough it's got a good weight um, doesn't feel too heavy doesn't feel too uh, I don't know, the iPhone 5 and 5S feels sharp. This is kind of rounded, feels good. Um, so for me, I'm a fan of sort of the design and the overall build quality. Jumping into the software, this phone here. Um, you know, it's kind of a bummer that Sony releases a brand new phone without brand new Android software, but maybe that's a testament to Android in general, you know, the fact that it's fragmented and there's lots of different versions of Android out right now. Um, this phone comes with Android 4.3 Jelly Bean. It's not updated yet to 4.4 KitKat. I'm assuming Sony will go ahead and update this phone to 4.4 eventually. Who knows when or how long it's going to take them to do that. Um, aside from the version of Android, you know, there's a lot of bloat on this phone as well. Sony has really, really, really frustrated me. Um, they did this with the Xperia Z originally too. Uh, just tons of, of installed, pre-installed applications that I really, really don't like or want. Um, lots of sort of audio-visual stuff, lots of other spammy, annoying things like McAfee security. I don't really want or need or care for freaking antivirus on my phone. Uh, let me manage that. I don't want this preloaded. Um, also, in terms of software, you know, Sony's skin that's on top of this is is sort of in your face. It's not as bad as like the Galaxy, uh, you know, TouchWiz interface. Um, there are things about it that I do like. There are things about it that annoy me. It's a little bit slow. I do notice some lag in here on the home screen with scrolling. I do notice some application loading lag, some keyboard lag. It's it's a little bit frustrating for me, especially when coming from an iPhone 5S or a Nexus 5 where you have very minimal lag, if, if any at all, uh, to have to go back and use this phone and experience those little bit of slowdowns here and there. One of the greatest features about this phone is the battery life. I think that the battery is probably the one greatest part of this phone that Sony has engineered, and I'm not sure if it's the actual milliamp hours of the battery itself or if it's the settings that they've done or just how they've controlled the battery use in this phone but you can easily I would say easily get um, almost two days of use out of, out of average use in this guy uh, we'll run it here and look at the power management. Um, they also have this neat tint thing where you can adjust the stamina mode and you can set these cool um, cool differences of your power use, but but very, very handy and very, 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 very good battery life on this phone. Probably one of the best phones I've ever used for battery life um, ever, other than the Note series in, in terms of a small, uh, normal-sized cell phone. One other thing to talk about is the camera. You know, Sony talks about the 20 megapixel camera on the back of this phone. Um, as much as I like the camera app in this phone, I don't don't actually like the camera. I think that the quality just isn't there. Um, I think the camera app itself is unique. I think it's got, you know, using this extra button is, fa is nice. It's fast. The camera is really responsive. Um, but if you actually look at the image quality, um, even compared to an Nexus 5, uh, it's just really, really not there. The Nexus 5 camera blows the Sony Xperia Z1 Compact out of the water. Um, I'll show you guys some, some sort of low light picture comparisons here uh, between the two of these phones. Um, I think that outdoor light, you know, the phone's probably okay, but it's nothing special. I mean, if you compare it to some of these other market-leading devices, you'll see that the Z1 Compact just doesn't hold its own compared to some things like iPhone 5S, Nexus 5, other top-of-the-line phones on the market right now. The one on the left is from the Sony Xperia Z1, and the one on the right is from the, the LG Nexus 5. And again, this is a very unscientific test. You guys saw me take the photo just there on the table. But if you look at the detail in the Sony, and you look at the detail in the Sony, and you look at the detail here in the G, and here in the G, you can see this picture is a little bit soft. You can see it's a little bit more sharp in the Nexus 5. Um, and you see this sort of all over the place with the Sony camera. I mean, the camera is good. But when you hear something like, oh, it's 20.7 megapixels, and you think Sony, you think really good image quality. But unfortunately, the camera is really disappointing. And I think you see this a lot with this with examples such as this one. Um, when you have phones like the iPhone 5S and the Nexus 5 sort of outperforming the Sony, even with fewer megapixels, um, 
it gets a little bit disappointing and a little bit upsetting when you expect a phone like the Xperia Z1 Compact to have such a much better camera. Uh, it turns out in reality it's actually not that impressive. Another thing to talk about is developer support. This phone is rooted, um, and there is, as of right now, which is February, middle of February 2014, there's one custom ROM available for this phone. Uh, the development support for this phone isn't nearly as good as some of the more popular handsets out there, like Nexus 5, Galaxy S4, uh, even HTC One, for that matter. So I'm sure there will be. I mean, it's, it, is a, it is a new phone, but um, if you're in the market for customization, for flashing new software, uh, you might want to think about a different phone uh, for doing that. The Sonys aren't really really as supported, um, don't really have a wide enough development community like some of the other more popular handsets out there. I guess the biggest reason why I'm so critical of this device, uh, you know, I mean, it's expensive. I paid $550 US or $560 US for this phone, um, and it really is boring when you compare it to some of these other cheaper handsets. I mean, this is a $350 Nexus 5, and it blows the Sony Xperia Z1 out of the water. I mean, yes, this is not waterproof, and yes, you know, it might not have as high megapixel camera on paper, but the camera quality is better. The build quality, in my opinion, is better. It doesn't, you know, even though it's plastic, it's not going to scratch up like the back of the Xperia Z1 Compact. Um, the screen is bigger, which, you know, again, could be a plus or minus depending on your hand size and stuff. But the Nexus 5 just has some really nice features about it, and it's, you know, substantially less money than the Xperia Z1 Compact. And I think... You know, I, I do like this phone a lot. I think that Sony's, you know, putting a good effort into sort of bringing uh, high-end features into a smaller package, and so I give them a lot of credit for that. I do think it's a good phone. I just don't think it's a great phone. I think that uh, there are better phones out there, the Motorola Moto X, the iPhone 5S, uh, the Nexus 5. And so you, when you start comparing pros and cons to each of these phones, and when you start comparing your hard-earned money, you realize that the Xperia Z1 just doesn't add up when you have these other options that are out there. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out my others on YouTube and rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.